What's up, you guys? Welcome to The Daily Ramble, a daily show where I talk about random things as well as what I'm doing for the day. And today I want to talk about the TikTokers that have fallen off. Now, this is the biggest platform I think I've seen people rise and fall from within like months' time. I mean, you can see people fall off all the time before that on like YouTube, Vine, Instagram, all that stuff. But the amount of people that will get some clout and then just drop immediately on TikTok is just astronomical. I mean, I feel like there's a new guy every single day and then that guy's gone within the next month. So, so there's a high rise and fall in that. And I want to know what these people do after they fall off. Like, I hope some of them save money because some of their content is so weird or, like, it's not even for, like, the wholesome people. It's for, like, the people that make, like, weird, like, prank or just, like, inter street interview content. Like, what are you guys doing after you fall off? Like, what are these people doing in interviews? Are they going to Lowe's and talking about, yeah, so... I used to make a living by going up to random people that were absolutely hammered in Nashville and asking what their body count was and then calling them some, some profanity after that. I feel like that's like their resume. I mean, other than that, some of these people get such a good and big following so young and they're just doing prank videos, punching someone in the Adam's apple in a bathroom somewhere and then after that just taking the, the dryer sheets and then just putting it on their neck to stop the bleeding. It's like, dude, that's not a prank. That's just you abusing someone and you should be in jail. And then next thing you know, it's them with a thumbnail like this holding onto the bars with like that and it's saying how I spent 30 days in jail. It's like, dog, we gotta stop this. We gotta stop this. I mean, some of these prank guys that fall off, it's like, what do you do after? You just showed you going up to a random 35 year old and trying to get breastfed off of them, and then she kicks you in the nuts, and then that's a prank. What are we doing, guys? How are they gonna go from that content to a real job? I don't know. It's like, do you walk into, do you walk into Costco and be like, listen, here's, here's, here's my resume. I used to be a TikTok star before I got canceled for taking a, a literal bite out of a child because I thought it was, you know, I was on a show of cake or child, and I took it by the child and I actually went through it. So I don't know. I don't know what these people are doing. I think it's called cake or not. And they're actually pretty good at that nowadays. But yeah, I just want to know the interview process for people that, especially when they're younger, they do like weird or gruesome content like that. Or even them just saying like profanity all the time. And then they do a background check. It's like, hey, do you remember calling that one dude at the gay pride uh, parade that slur 15 times in a row? And they're like, dude, it was for the shot. It was for the shot. I don't know how these interviews go. I would love to see how these interviews go with these people that have fallen off because I just imagine they're <laughs> like, what can you even say at that point? I feel like it's tough for them to get a job and they just screwed themselves. And half of them dropped out of school to pursue. And the ones that are successful, good for them. Keep it going. Um, but yeah, it's like they get famous for one thing and then they keep doing the trend, it dies off, and then they're back to ground zero trying to get a job at Krispy Kreme, but they can't even get that job, that low tier of job because they punched someone with brass knuckles on at a local park and stole their dog. It's like, all right, man, what are we doing here? How do these interviews go? I, I can imagine a decent amount of them don't get jobs, but I just, unless they go under an alias name, but then eventually they're going to find out, bring you into the corner, bring you into the room and be like, hey, so we found out, I know this is your fifth shift at Chick-fil-A, but we found out that you did a jersey swap with a homeless man and then ended up stealing his money. And then not only that, you, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> that was off the dome and it did not land. But you guys get what I'm saying. I don't know how they, how they can get jobs after some of, some of these guys fall off. And especially after that short run, it's like, dude, you're up for a month and now you're down for life. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine not being able to get a job at the local McDonald's because of the videos you posted for a month. But that's what some of these people have. They've, they have to be in that situation. They just have to be in that situation. But with that being said, I've just been packing orders today. I have about 40-ish orders going out, it looks like. Maybe 40 to 50. So that's good. Good sales day. And I'm going to go meet my parents, uh, get some dinner, get some drinks, and then that's going to be my night, guys. So I'm going to be... I post every single weekday, 9 p.m. Central, like sub. Peace. I'll see you guys tomorrow.